Hi guys and welcome back to Max Electronics. Uh, in today's video we will be repacking this IDX uh, Endura T 10S battery uh, which is used in professional video equipment. It's a V-mount battery and it doesn't have the first date of charge so it's no one taken any time to, to write that down. Uh, it is full of the standard lithium ions uh, 18615 cells. This one works fine. Well, it um, shows it's full, but it doesn't last long at all. I don't know whether the original capacity of it is low or something. I'm not sure what the capacity is either. But we're going to be repacking with the uh, 3 amp lithium ions. Another quick tip, with all my batteries that I use, uh, you see the little tick that I've stuck there and the little cross there? So when they're sitting in the case, uh, they're usually stacked up like this and there's all sorts of Sony's and batteries and everything. So when they're facing up like this in a case, there's a green tick means it's fully charged. When I use it and the battery goes flat, I flip it and I put it in a case this way and I grab another one. So when I get home, I can open the case and I can see which ones need to be recharged and take it out and put it on charge and then put it in a case this way so I will know which batteries are charged and which are not. So, I've already repacked one of those before, about six months ago, but uh, we're going to repack this one and uh, I was dreading this process. The nightmare is to open the case. So from what I remember, it is uh, glued in at the seam here. And it also clipped in. So it's both, I think there's four clips. I think there's one here, one here, and two on the side. So I think there's four clips and it's glued in together. So to open it up, what I'm gonna try doing is just cracking it. And I'm pretty sure that that smaller part inserts into the big one. So I'll try my pry tool on camera. I can't promise anything. So I'll probably have to open it off camera. And I tried to do it really carefully as well because I don't want to damage it. The other one was a mess. Like you could see the epoxy sticking out of here and everything. So, yeah, this one is... All right, well, I'm going to try it. And I think the only way is just to crack it and keep pressing. So I'm going to do this off camera and I'll come back with a bit of a more process once I start cracking it open. So, I'm literally sweating. I'm trying to open the battery. It's a nightmare. Um, cosmetically, it's not going well at all. I've broke a piece off, so I'll have to glue it all back together at the end. Uh, it keeps cracking. What I've done is I've taken the screwdriver and I went around the perimeter pressing really hard. And you can hear the cracking sound of the glue. And then after that, I tried the pry tool, but it's just not working. And as you, just as you crack it open, it cracks here, for example. You can see the crack right here. So I'll have to glue this. Um, yeah, so that top lid needs to come off as you can see. I'm going to keep going with it and once it's almost open I'll update you. So, oh, this is a nightmare. Okay, um, excuse the noise, I've got computer and everything running here. So I did, what I've done is, I've taken that corner because I didn't want it started cracking here, if you can see that crack here. And I didn't want to crack it any further, so I've taken a small screwdriver, I've put it in a corner there just before the crack and I hit it really hard with a hammer. Uh, not really hard so it doesn't go all the way through but knocking it and you can hear this one crack and then after that crack it went opening quite smoothly here and I haven't opened this side just yet so it, as you can see it did crack here but that's alright we'll glue it back in. And there we go. It is open. There's the, actually there's more clips. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six clips. The sixth one broke off uh, because it's glued in probably. Here's the battery. Now I believe that it's also glued in there. So uh, yeah, that's the construction of it. I think it's glued to the bottom with a double-sided tape. So I'm going to try getting it out of there. We'll see. Yeah, it's double-sided tape. Oh, let's stick metal things into the battery. Okay, I got a better idea. I'm going to use a soldering iron and I'm going to desolder the battery. You can see the tabs are here. So I'm going to desolder, lift the board off, and then we can um, 
deal with the battery itself. Let me grab something to lift them up. I could use desoldering wig, but uh, there's no point. I'll just lift it off. You just got to be very careful not to short anything out. So here's one. Okay, so that's desoldered. It is still really hot. You can still see the solder wobbling. Let's remove the board. And there's also that fuse, thermal fuse is silicon in, so we have to make sure we're really careful not to break it and just get the silicon off. Yep, there we go. Here, oh jeez. So. Oh, it's still hot. That's the board for it. I don't think there's anything exciting underneath, just the tracks. Uh, it seems like we would have um, 16 batteries in here, but that's not true. There's only um, 12. So let's get them out and you will see. And they're also packed in a paper. So you know how the, the battery is usually metal and they just got paper around it. Now, if you're prying the batteries out like I am, make sure you do it from the negative. So I can see there's the positive sides here. So you don't want to stick a screwdriver in because the edge of the battery in the center is opposite terminals. So you can do it from the negative because that's all. There we go. Here we go. And then I'll do this from this side again on the negative terminal. And there we have it. The pack. So they in uh, three in parallel, four in series. When you're repacking batteries like this, you gotta make sure that they all same uh, resi internal resistance in milliohms. I prefer to go for the critical applications like this, that they are under 100 milliohms. Uh, I've already got batteries picked and matched. Okay, so I've done the battery. So that's the originals that were there. As you can see, they're three in parallel and uh, four, three parallels in series. That's a bit confusing. And that's the ones that I've just did. So uh, it'll be curious to see after we assemble the battery. So here it is, by the way. Oh. And they are all uh, around 3200, 3100 milliamps, uh, all matched. So as you can see, there's 70 and 75 milliohms, and those are 63 to 68, I think, milliohms. So they're all matching. Uh, let's put them, we'll test those batteries at the end and see what capacity they hold. So technically, this battery would be around 9 points or 3 points, so let's say an average uh, 3200 milliamps times 3, that would be 9600 milliamps. So that should be a pretty good battery. And we'll see what those will test at. Now, let's remember which way it goes. Um, that's the charging, so upside down, this way. So I'm gonna put a drop of glue just on that silicon there to hold the batteries in place. Just a tiny drop. This is a slow drying glue. Again, I'm not gonna put too much, just slightly couple of drops, just enough to hold those batteries in place so they don't rattle around. Uh, and I'm going to put it in the grooves of existing silicon that was there so we can see where it's going to glue in. All right. All right, I'm dropping those in. Oh, yeah, I see why it's not fitting in. There we go. Oh my God. Make sure they're sitting nicely in there. 
here we go let's add the board back in actually the buttons in place yep let's add the board back in And here is the last one done. So let's see if the battery is uh, working. Yep. As you can see, that's working fine. So now this battery is uh, 9600 milliamps. Okay, I'm going to glue this back on. So I'm going to put a bit of glue around the edges here and then snap it back on and put it with the press. Um, the other thing what I've done, I used a Stanley blade and I trimmed whatever was in the way. And then what I to take, uh, I took the um, empty case without circuit board of batteries and I snapped it together with the clips that were <laughs> remaining and it clipped in really well. So now I know that it should clip in with no problems. I'm going to add glue and clip it in. So especially add glue in the corners. Okay, here it is. Um, I'm just going to glue this bit in this bit in properly just push it in under the press and um, I'll also put the those ones on uh, test and we'll see what capacity there is so I will be right back I have been testing the batteries and here they are some of them are okay -ish, but mostly they're not so I've written down some values and uh, that's mixed up because I'm also doing some other batteries as well as you can see here but those ones from this, uh, they are testing definitely below the value. So some of them look at 1400 and um, 53 milliamps and 150 milliohms. Some of them as bad as 1161, uh, like this one here. And it's 186 milliohms. So that's not good. Usually I sort batteries by uh, from everything up to 100 milliohms. So I consider them really good. So in regions of say like... Um, 75, 85, 80 milliohms. I used to put them aside as good batteries and I use them to repack the other cells. Then uh, I've got everything from 100 to 120 milliohms, which I consider as um, okay batteries, still usable for applications like, I don't know, small applications. Then I've got everything from 120 to 140 milliohms, which is um, not good for anything high load, uh, but they're good enough for LED lights or something that consumes low power. And the rest of them are just junk. So obviously 186 milliohms is going to go straight to the bin. 150 milliohms are going to go straight to the bin. 100, so all of those are going to go to the bin. And I think there's only one battery that is, where is it? I've written it down. So it'd be one, two, three, four. 100, yeah, which is this one. It measured at 1454 milliamps and 136 milliohms. So it's four milliohms of being bad. So it's still good enough to say put an LED torch. So I've got this torch here and um, it's just a standard torch that usually comes with a three, um, 10, um, what is it, three AAA cells. And what I've done, I've removed that whole block and instead I've got a, just a lithium cell in there. So this one's still all right, but yeah, that's how I usually use them, and that works fine, you know. Where is it? Oh, maybe it doesn't work anymore. Probably dead cell, I haven't used that torch in a while. Yeah, that's odd. Let's try that cell. Oh, let's try this 140 milliohms. Oh, I see why. I need to tighten the ring there. They get really loose, so usually use the tweezers and just screw that in. There we go. Yep, works now. All right. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed this video on repacking the um, V-mount IDX battery. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to see more repacking other batteries, maybe some tools like Ryobi Makita, I don't know. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. My name is Max, I will see you next time. Bye!